Hey guys, it's Tessa. Um, so I have been wanting to make like a bag kind of like this, the focus. So it's like three granny squares connected together. Um, but I've been wanting to make a bag like that for a little bit now. But I found mosaic granny square, which at first I was like, what am I looking at? But this is what it looks like. So it's essentially you're like kind of doing the pine stitch where you're picking up, uh, where you're crocheting into um, like the previous bar of the last row. It makes more sense later. Um, but yeah, so I found both of these and when you look, you can see that it's a uh, post crochet, front post crochet it looks like, all the way through the rows. So I decided to make a bag like this. And this is our color palette. You're not really sitting flat, but this is our color palette currently, so that when it's folded in half, it looks like this. Oh, there we go. It looks like this. Um, I think it looks really cute so far, but I wanted to take you along and show you how to do this um, basic mosaic crocheting. I'm starting with orange. The only stitches you need to learn, need to know in order to do this is a slip stitch, chaining, a double crochet, and then treble crochet. I'll go over all three of them or show you all three of them and hopefully that'll help you out. So the first thing we're going to do is do a slip stitch or a granny square, or not granny square, you're going to do a slip stitch or you're going to do a um, magic circle and then you're going to chain four, three, four, then you're going to slip through the back bar of that first chain and then yarn over and pull through. So now you should have this little ring and your hook should be on here. So instead of chaining three to do your um, first double crochet, I personally, whoops, I personally prefer to insert my hook in this hole, pull through, yarn over, pull through. So that technically creates a single crochet. And then we'll go through this bar right here and we'll pull th another loop through, yarn over and pull through. So now we've essentially created a double crochet. Next, you're going to treble crochet. So that just means you loop your yarn over your hook once and then twice. Insert your hook in that main loop again. Pull through. Pull through again. And then pull through. So each time you do a treble crochet, you're pulling through two loops. And then we'll do a, just a double crochet, which is just yarning over once. Pulling through. Go over. Or yarn over. Pull through. Yarn over. Pull through. Then you will chain two, and you'll repeat those three, the, that cluster of stitches again. So just a double crochet, whoops, just a normal double crochet, then a treble crochet, and then again a double crochet. I'm trying to pull out some extra yarns, it's a little easier. Alright, so you should have two clusters at this point, and then you'll chain two, double crochet, treble crochet, then double crochet again. And then on the final cluster, you'll do the same thing. You'll double crochet, oh my gosh. You'll double crochet, then treble crochet. And then finally double crochet again. And then you'll chain two. And then if you chose to do that single crochet bar again, or if you chose to do that single crochet bar like I did, what you'll do is you'll go into the first V up top, and then slip through as normal. So here you're welcome to either switch colors or stay using this color. It is up to you. I'm going to stay using it so I can repeat the three rows and then go from there. So the first thing you're going to do here is either chain three to act as your last double crochet of the cluster that's going to be in this two cha chain two space. Or again, do the way I do it where you have your two single crochets stacked on top of each other. Oops. Oh my gosh. You have your two single crochets stacked on top of each other and then boom. You'll do the same thing we've been doing already, where in this chain two space, you'll double crochet one, and then to treble crochet, instead of just doing it in the chain two space, you'll move your stitches a little bit, and you'll go into the ring we made at the beginning. So here, let me show you that again. So you'll go into the ring, so that's between these two, stitch, two sets of stitches, and you have your three loops on your hook, you go into it, and make sure you don't continue going through all the way. Before you go all the way, you want to pull that chain two space behind the hook. And then you'll do your treble crochet. 
And then you'll do a double crochet just like normal in that chain two space. We'll chain two again, double crochet one, treble crochet again. We're going into this bar here. So you go all the way down to that bar, all the way down to it, and then you make sure for this two, chain two space, you go behind, you put it behind the hook, and then you do your treble crochet as normal. Whoops! It'll help if I don't lose the stitches. And then you do your final double crochet. So in this corner, you should have a double crochet. Your V of the two treble crochets should be inside that first chain four space we made or magic circle. If you are doing a magic circle, leave it looser to start and then pinch it tighter. Once you do all four of these, you'll then have another double crochet, a chain two, double crochet, treble, double. Right? And then to do the next one, you're gonna do the same thing. We're not chaining in between, you're welcome to. I found that it stretches it out a little bit. So you'll do your treble crochet, treble crochet, and then double again. I'll meet you back at the end of this row. Okay, so you've made it to this final uh, chain two space and what you're going to put in it. So you're going to do your normal double crochet, treble crochet, double, chain two, double, treble. And then since we did make that first double crochet at the start of this row, we are just going to slip stitch into it. Perfect. And then again, if you are continuing, if you are choosing to switch colors every row, you would just switch colors and start the new color in this space here. So this is the space between these two clusters. Um, or if you're like me and you're doing multiple rows of the same color, what you'll do is you'll take your hook, you'll put it into this gap here. Let's see if I can get an angle on this. So there's a tiny gap here. You'll insert your hook into that. You'll yarn over, pull up. You can either slip stitch it all together and then do your chain three. Or again, if you're doing the stacked single crochet like I am, you'll pull it up. And then instead of slipping this loop over, you'll just do that single crochet and pull through. You'll do your stack again. Or you'll do the second single crochet, excuse me. So now you're here. On this row, we are starting with the first double crochet of this section of the cluster. So we'll treble crochet here. So we'll do two. You should have three loops on your hook. And then in that treble crochet of row one, that's going to be this stitch that's kind of bulging out a bit. You're going to go into it like a front post crochet. You're going to pull through and you're going to pull through all the loops on your hook. And then you're going to do your double crochet for this section and you're good to go. And you'll just keep repeating the, in the chain two spaces, you'll do this pattern where you go into the previous rows, chain two to do it. Um, and then anytime you come across a space where you have a tre uh, this trio set underneath it, you'll go into the treble crochet of that uh, cluster. I'll show you how to do the corner one more time and how to do one of these middle stitches one more time and then I'll meet you back at the end of this row. So firstly, you do your double crochet into the chain two space and you do your two yarn overs and you go into the previous rows chain two space putting the current rows, the one that you're currently stitching into, behind your hook. Yarn over, pull through, pull through all the loops on your hook. Now double crochet into the current one row you're working in. Chain two. Double crochet again. Do your two loops for your treble crochet. Go into that previous rows. Chain two space. Put your current behind. Yarn over all three loops, or all six loops. And then you'll do your final double crochet. And again, I'm choosing not to do chain spaces. It's up to you if that's something you would like to do. For me, it was just causing it to warp a little too much. So again, in this gap space between these two clusters, you'll double crochet one. You'll yarn over twice to do your treble crochet. You'll find the treble crochet of that row below it. Insert your hook into the bar of that cro treble crochet. And then you'll do your treble crochet for that section. And then you'll double crochet again in that original space. But yeah, so that's what we're looking at so far. And I'm going to meet you back at the end of this row to show you how I do color changes for this pattern. See you soon. All right, so now you've done this final chain two space. You did your double crochet, treble crochet, double, double, treble, double. And then just like we've done for the previous rows, you're going to slip stitch into that top or first stitch or chain. You're going to pull through. Hold on, I went in wrong. No, I didn't. Okay. And you're going to pull through all the way this time because we're doing a color change here. You'll pull all the way through. And then you'll snip your yarn. And now you each have a tiny little square. 
You can choose to keep your squares this size, or if you're like me, you can add on a second color. And that's going to be this uh, tweed whitish color. It's kind of hard to see the tweed print. But, uh, so this first color was the Lion Brand Pumpkin Spice, and then this one is the Aaron Fleck by uh, Red Heart. The green we're going to be using, which is this green, is I believe Sage by uh, Lion Brand One Pound, just like the orange. And then the brown that we're going to be using is the Warm Brown by Big Twist. I know a lot of people have said they aren't the biggest fans of Big Twist. I haven't had any issues with it splitting too much, but I have noticed that some of their newer um, batches have been a little shinier, a little less manageable to deal with. But yeah, so to do this color change, you're gonna insert your hook into the slip stitch of your second color. You're gonna pick up your previous square that you're working on. I personally try to avoid slipping into the gap that we ended in. I just feel like sometimes it makes it harder to weave in the ends. So I'm gonna to move to this one instead. I'm gonna insert my hook. Again, this is if you're doing uh, my way of starting a row. This is how you'll do those single crochet stacked. So you've inserted your hook with the loop on it. And then you yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. And then you'll do your stacking where you just go through that first bar again. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. If you're not doing it this way, then you can start it by having that loop on your hook, inserting into that square or that portion of the square, and then yarning over, pulling through, but then pulling through that slip stitch you had. And then you can chain three from here. It's just to securely make sure that that loop is not going anywhere and that that chain isn't going anywhere. So once again, if you're doing it the stacked single crochet way, you have that loop on your hook, go into the gap, pull through, yarn over, and then you'll go into that space, you'll yarn over, pull through again, and you've got your stack. And um, this becomes less noticeable than it is now. Also, when you're weaving in the ends, you can pull it back and it hides it. So now we'll do our treble crochet into this treble crochet that's popped up already. This turns a little bit thicker than the orange, so it's a little harder to work with. And you'll do your double crochet and that's how it looks. I'll also show you just this corner space and how the color change looks in there. And I'll check back in after each row. Or not each row, each color. I'll check back in after each color. And then we can talk about seaming and adding a lining to this bag, the strap. And if I want to add a little like cover flap, which I'm thinking about doing, but I think I'd put my time into it first and think about it a bit more. So there you go. So this is what that first stitch looks like. You can see where it's connected. And then here, it almost looks like you have two V's going on. Let's see if I can get the focus. So you've got the treble crochet V's and the double crochet V's. And you'll just keep doing all of this all the way across. I'm gonna do three rows in total of this white, and I'll check back in with you. This first row completed, so you can kind of get a look at what it's supposed to look like. So you'll see, we didn't go into every treble crochet. We essentially went into every other. Uh, and we're gonna continue to repeat that. So all of these ones that we quote unquote missed, this time, we're gonna go back over on the second row of the white. Um, that would be row five if you're using a single color. Um, but yeah, so, excuse me. I wanna give you a quick glance at what it looked like currently after one row of the color change. All right, I'll check in again once we start the green row. Where we're at after the three rows of the white, you can see that in the first row of the white, we picked up every other orange. In the second row, we picked up every other orange as well. And then finally in this third row, we picked up every other white. Uh, stitch as well. So we're at here. Um, currently my squares, so these guys, are matching up to about 14 and a half inches diagonally. Um, and that'll tell me, or help tell me, how large this bag is going to be in the end. Um, I'm gonna do the green and I'm gonna do the green next uh, and then show you what that looks like from there. And then we'll complete the brown as well. And then we'll go over how I'm going to piece all this together so we and the green rows uh, and now I'm going to do the three brown rows and then we can finish the brown row as well. This is what the square looks like when it's completed. Alright so there's a couple different ways that we can connect the squares. Um, I can either slip stitch across, can either slip stitch come on, across this edge or I can essentially double crochet into each stitch, connecting it along the way. Um, I kind of want to try that way first, just to see if I like it. It might add a little extra length to the bag overall. 
Um, I'm also considering making a fourth square that I can use as a, like a, I can't think of what this is called, to use as like a cover for the bag and it can connect with like a little uh, button or something on that space. But yeah, uh, let me get you guys in position and we can go over how I'm connecting squares and how they connect in general. Chaos on my desk. The way these squares connect, you take all of them and you fold them diagonally to create a triangle. So you have one as your, as your base, you have your other one that's a triangle and it connects on this side. Let me pull you guys back a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about a little more. There we go. And then you finally have your third one and then that one connects on this side. All you're doing to connect these is starting here at the chain two spaces on all three to connect them and then stitching down the sides where the bottom and the side connects and wrapping it around on the other side as well. And that's it. Um, but like I said, I'm first going to try connecting them uh, using a double crochet between each one and I'll let you know how that goes. So what I've done here is I put two double crochet in the chain two space to connect it all the way through. Uh, and then we're going to be using our second square, our third square, and connecting it. Um, I've already picked which edge I'm going to be using. I folded it into that triangle shape and then lined it up. So I'm going to use this top edge. I fold it back out to a square just to make it easier to work with, but it's up to you. You should have one loop on your hook. And what you're going to do is go into the chain two space of that new square. And then you're going to yarn over and essentially double crochet as normal. So you're going to yarn over, go through the chain two space of the bottom square, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, and then finally yarn over, pull through, not only that loop, that under loop, you're going to go through the chain two space and that top loop. So now you've essentially secured it together. From here, you're going to insert your hook into that first loop, or, or first uh, double crochet, into both of the bars, and then double crochet as normal, into the first double crochet of this side as well, and then pull through all of your loops as you would normally. You're going to get this stitching here where it has a little bit of orange, a little bit of brown, and then the rest of the orange. I personally like the way this looks. It's up to you though. If it's not something you like, then I would just recommend slip stitching it together instead. And then we would just continue this all the way through to the other uh, chain two space and we'll go over how to loop into that as well. Alright, so now we are here back at this chain 2 space, and what we're going to be doing next is stitching this side. Before we get there, we have to address the chain 2 space on the bottom and top rows to connect them. Just like we did previously, you're going to insert your hook in that top chain 2 space, and then double crochet one into the bottom uh, chain space. And you're going to double crochet as normal. And then, you're going to do the same thing we did previously, where we fold our triangle to make it correct. And then you're going to insert your hook in that top chain 2 space, double crochet into the bottom chain 2 space. And you're going to continue, do it on the other side, doing that whole stitching on the other side, and then once you get to that corner, we'll go over how to do that as well. Okay, so we've gotten here to this end point. It's a little bit difficult to stitch into here, but once we do it, we'll be done, and we'll only be adding two stitches. So, what we're going to do is, just like we've done previously, we're going to do, we're going to insert our hook into that top chain 2 space, we're going to double crochet into that bottom chain 2 space, and then finally we're just going to do an independent double crochet and only go into that bottom chain 2 space. Again, it's a little difficult, but it should be fine. And then finally, we're going to find where we started that last row, or the start of this row I guess, and then you're just going to slip stitch into it. And then, cast off, 
and you have your bag basically done. Your bag's pretty much done. I'm actually going to make that fourth square to go over the top. I think that would just make it look a little better personally, but it's up to you if you want to leave it here or do that. And I'll check back in once I've done that so I can show you how we attach that one as well because it's a little bit different than how we attach these three. Made my fourth square. Again, um, like I mentioned previously, you can just leave it at the three squares and then move on to the strap. Um, I'm personally going to add a fourth square so that when it's connected, I can easily just have a little flap to cover everything in case I have like my wallet in there or something like that. It's just so it's more secure for me. We're basically going to do the same thing we did for this section, but this time we're only going to do it on half of the triangle. On the other half, we're going to do something a little bit different since we're not going to be fully connecting it to the other side. So just for this side, we're going to start on one of the corners, work our way up, do the same thing we've done previously. Uh, but what we're going to do differently in this chain two space is we're going to go into the chain two space, go into this chain one space, or chain two space as well, and double crochet in here. And then we're going to double crochet in the center stitch of this orange, and then do the same thing on this side where we go into the double the chain two space and then double crochet into this gap here, or this chain two space here. Um, I'm going to get all the way up to that point and then show you guys how I'm connecting it. If you find a different way you'd like to connect it, then you're more than welcome to do that as well. Okay, so now we've gotten to the point where we're at the center stitches again for here. And what we're going to do is you're going to insert your hook into the chain two space at the top uh, square, yarn over, and the first thing you're going to do is go into the first one, the first double crochet. So mine's a little bit squished here, but it's this stitch here for me, this one that has the loop up. And I'm going to double crochet into it. I'm just picking up the stitches first and then flipping my hook to double crochet into it. Perfect. We're going to do our alone double crochet as you're showing yarn over. Go into the same alone one of that previous row. And then once again, go back in through the chain two space and go into that first spot, or excuse me, next spot. And you've connected it, and then you'll rotate your whole, your whole thing in order to do this side now. And then I'll check back in and show you how we do the opposing part of the triangle and how I'm gonna essentially end off this part of the bag. We finished connecting it finally, so if I hold this up, it'll flip right over and be a little pocket or uh, be a little cover. Um, and then the way I'm going to do this so that I make sure that this actually has a point to hold on to is I'm going to essentially repeat what we've done previously with the mosaic granny square and I'm just going to do one row of the orange all the way around this corner. And I'll see you then. I finished doing this edging. I think I'm also going to do a row of single crochets across both of these points just so that this sits a little nicer. You could have blocked the squares, I just I don't have a steamer that works correctly for blocking this. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to do a row of single crochets and then come back up to the top here and probably do a row of single crochets across the top of this as well. See, I did a single crochet row here and then when I went back around, I made sure I did one on this edge as well. And then in the center here, I just did three single crochets so that it would reinforce the button when I place it. And when it's all closed up and folded, you can see that the point sits just a little bit below the center here so it looks like it fits right in this space. Um, so I'm going to sew a button on that'll fit and then we'll check back in on how we're doing the straps. Also, you can weave in your ends at any point. I'm just waiting till the end because that's what I prefer to do. Okay, so I ended up finishing the bag. I still have to weave in all the ends, but it's done for all intents and purposes. Um, so here is a look at the, come on, band and how I chose to do it. Essentially, it's just a bunch of slip stitching. Uh, I did two rows of each color, slip stitching across, and then I attached it through the top uh, or the exposed chain two space and just looped it through so it's on the inside a little bit. But yeah, it's all done, it's all made. Here I'll move back so you can see it better. But yeah, so that's all I got for you this week. See you Friday or Saturday. Bye.